we all know it's sometimes very challenging for a beginner to know how to crochet even how to make a chain stitch so today my goal is to show the beginners on how to hold a hook and how to go ahead and make a chain let's go ahead and see how we're gonna hold our hook there are two ways you can hold your hook you can hold your hook as a pencil or you can hold it as a knife there is no better way of holding it it all depends with an individual and their preference and the way they feel comfortable in holding the hook and there is also another thing that I would like to point out some people will hold their crochet hook far away from the bevel or too close to the bevel right here it all depends on what you're comfortable with some people will hold it back here some of them will hold it at the center and some of them would actually choke it so it all depends with the person to me the way I hold my crochet hook it all depends on how I feel the only thing I would like to point out when you're crocheting there is a lot of wrist movement so you have to pay attention to that because sometimes you may strain your wrist as you keep on doing that and you may end up having uh, the wrist pain and that may be associated with a uh, carpal tunnel syndrome and maybe when you have that you may need to take a break and see your doctor one thing that we need to know is how to hold our yarn once we start crocheting there will be two parts of the yarn there is the side of the tail and there will be the side where we will have our working yarn the tail is the part that we will have uh, towards the edge of the tail or the, towards the beginning of the yarn always when you're working as a chain do not chain so close to the edge because it may end up like ripping off your wax always leave a little bit of a tail to me i usually leave about four inches which is about 10.2 centimeters of tail yarn so when you're holding your yarn always the working side of the yarn that has more yarn that's where you get your non-dominant hand at and your non-dominant hand is the hand that you will not be crocheting with so your hook will be on your dominant hand and your yarn the side where you're gonna hold the your yarn is going to be on the other side of the hand which is the non-dominant hand i'm right-handed so my dominant hand is right and that's where i'm gonna hold my hook and my non-dominant hand is left and that's where i'm going to hold my yarn at so now that we know that our dominant hand holds the hook and the non-dominant hand will hold the yarn all the time so now we have to go and know how to adjust the tension so usually the tension is adjusted with your non-dominant hand and your dominant hand will be doing the crochet work when you wrap your yarn around like that this side it creates the tension on this yarn right here. If you want a very relaxed tension, you just relax this side a little bit. And then when you want it a little bit tight, you just push it a little bit. All the time, like this is the tension right here. Like and right here, it creates the tension. When you wrap your yarn around the finger, some people will wrap it like that. Some people will not. Uh, some people will just have it just once like that even if you wrap it one time like that this yarn will still create the tension and it will be pulled by this finger so the tension will be created when this yarn wraps around somewhere okay some people may do it differently so everybody has a different way of doing it but to me i usually wrap it like that it's either i, I wrap it around like that or i let it stay like that so it all depends on how you do it either way it doesn't matter so this is what creates the tension now that we've seen how to to do the tension you can easily adjust this tension by increasing this distance right here or reducing this distance so that's how you create the tension of your work now that we have known all that we need to go ahead and start making our slip knot we can make our slip knot in two ways you can make it without using a crochet hook or you can make it using a crochet hook let me go ahead and show you how to do it without a crochet hook then i'll show you how to do it with the crochet hook to make your slip knot without a crochet hook head and leave about four inches of tail which is 10.2 centimeters that's the tail and this is the side of the working yarn and lay it as, as such okay once you do that go ahead and lift your yarn so you can twist it like that whereby the tail goes over and the working yarn goes under and then you make that cross right there when you do that lift up the area that has a loop and bring it towards the working side 
of the yarn as such fold it over and bring it over on the working yarn once you lay it over the, let it go and pull the working yarn you see this yarn right here you pull it over as such so now let everything go down and then just pull the yarn that you just brought over or the yarn that you just split and then now you've made your slip knot that's how you make your slip knot once you make the slip knot to know that you've made the right slip knot usually when you pull the nose or the knot the slip knot that you just made like that when you pull it and the working yarn is the one that is moving the tail will not move at all it will be stiff but this one will be moving now you can make it as small as you want it and then you insert now your hook into the knot and then you start making the chain so that's how you do your slip knot without using your hook so let's go ahead and do it using the hook have your hook on your dominant hand and your working yarn on a non-dominant hand so leave about four inches of the tail which is about 10.2 centimeters and then wrap your yarn around the finger or make the tension that's what i will call it because some people will wrap it and some people will not Wrap it. however you do it just go ahead and create your tension but when you create the tension make sure you hold this yarn still and this one still get in between the yarn and twist your hook to make this cross right here and go ahead twist it one more time to have two of them see that one and that one and then go back to your tension right here and pull the yarn through the loop that you just made and then secure your slip knot and that's how you make your slip knot now that we've made our slip knot the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and learn about yarning over yarning over is when you pull the tension yarn right here and then your hook will go under the tension yarn right here and then you go ahead wrap it around the hook and you pull through the loop and that now makes your first chain let's go ahead again yarn over you pull through you draw through the loop you make your second chain yarn over pull through draw the yarn through one loop you make your third chain so you keep on doing that until you get the required size and that's how your chain is going to look like once you make the required size of the chain let's say this is the required size of the chain that we need so now i'm going to show you the parts of this chain so there are two side of the chain the front side of the chain has the v's as you can see this is a v right here that's a v that's a v that's a v that's a v that's the front side of the chain and that's how it looks like it's like the v's which are connected together and then the back side of the chain as you can see it contains the ridges or contains the bumps see it has the bumps as you can see there is a bump bump all the way so that's how the back of the chain looks like the back of the chain it makes a chain link see right here it's a chain and a link chain link a chain and a link a chain and a link that's where its names comes from chain link because it makes the chain right here and then a link a chain and a link a chain and a link so that's why it's a chain link the next thing that we are going to talk about is the parts of the chain apart from the front and the back there are a little bit of different parts of the chain right here so there is this part of the chain right here that is close to you see this loop right here the part of the v that is towards you and there is a part of the v that is far away from you so there is this part that is close to you and there is this other part that is away from you the part that is close to you usually it's a front loop and the part that is away from you is the back 
below. The V usually have the front loop and the back loop, okay? But right now we're not going to go into detail about it. We will see it more or we will see it more when we're working on the project. Like when the project grows up, then that's when it will make a lot of sense. But for now it wouldn't make any sense. And there is also the back side of the chain you see where there is a link or the bumps so these are the bumps or the links the reason why i'm showing you those three areas these are the areas where you can make your stitches on you can make your stitches at the back of the chain on the links or the front part of the chain but most of the time we make it at the back side of the chain so those are the parts of the chain now let's go ahead and see how we count our chain for you to count the chain the are two stitches that we never count we never count this loop where the hook is okay we do not count that one and then we do not count our slip knot right here we do not count that but we can count any chain in between you can count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and this is 24. Okay? But you do not count, you don't count the slip knot and you don't count the loop where the hook is currently. And when you go to the back, Sometimes there are projects that will require you to work at the back of the chain, which is the bumps or the chain links. So for you to work on the back of the chain, this is where these are the ones you count. You count on the, this link right here. You count on this chain. See that one? See that one? Those are the ones you count. You count on the bumps only or you stitch on your bumps so depending on what your project will tell you next time i'm going to show you on how to work on this chain for now that's all i wanted to show you don't forget to leave me a comment below subscribe like share and turn on the notification bell for more videos.